<laughs> I am Rafa Benito. Uh, you are watching the Red Men TV. Hello, welcome to the Red Men TV. Uh, we've got Liverpool legend David Fairclough here because he's got a brand new book out. Not just because of that, because obviously he wants to just to come and hang out. Exactly. Exactly. Um, but yeah, obviously the book's come out. We thought we could sit down in a room and talk about it in a boring fashion, or we can play pool, have a bit of a chat, and uh, and see how we get on. Looking forward to it. Exactly. You've no, already, no you, pool tips in that book, though. <laughs> You'll you're, see soon. You already told me, oh, I'm not, not, very, not very good at pool. We'll, we'll see about that. I do fear that I'm about to get sharked. So obviously, I think it's it's probably the one you get asked about most, but it's it probably the best place to start, I guess, in some respect. Saint Etienne, the most famous goal in some respects. I mean, do you get bored of talking about it, or is it just one of those moments that that, that lives on for you forever? Yeah, it, it, thankfully it lives on. It wasn't something that I don't think I ever thought would um, be remembered the way that it has. The fact that people remind me of it every day is. Uh, I think it's something I should be grateful of. It's 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 been it's been great for me. You know, as I say, would not have uh, perhaps thought it ever would be, but um, it was such a great night to be a Liverpoolian on, on that day, yeah. and, and for me to actually score what turned out to be the winning goal. Well, it's been a, it's, it's been something great, and um, and thankfully. Uh, we won the European Cup at the end of it all, so it's meant a little bit more. I think. <laughs> yeah, you know, just it, it did help to, to get us uh, to Rome. Is that pretty much where the super sub moniker came from? Because he said, he said super sub strikes again. The super sub tag actually appeared in the, in the newspapers uh, for the first time in '76, um, coincided with us beating Burnley um, at home one weekend. I scored two, and um, and that was the first time I ever seen the super sub. Tag, yeah, and um, and because then I, I, I had a I was on a little bit of a run of scoring goals, then it, it became became pretty um, pretty wide <laughs> pretty widespread, and um, you know it was something that was probably not planned by the uh, I, I think uh, by the headline writer himself, yeah. but the way that it was picked up on. Um, was was it automatic and um, it was one of the more glamorous sort of or one of the more sort of um, the nicknames that I was more happier with than, than some of the others uh, <laughs> who, who described me in all kinds of different ways copper knob, redhead, gingerhead and all that <laughs> Super Sub was quite tame by uh, in comparison <laughs> Having a local lad crop up you know you've got the, 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 the players you would have played alongside you've got Kevin Keegan in that, in that mm -hmm. game as well and the fact that you know what? What was the what was the reception like around the city at the time? Because we we've seen it just as, even as recently as like Ricky Lambert. We all want to see local lads succeed, and you you know that was the that was almost the pinnacle of it, I guess, at the time. Well, my, my first season, I won the league and, and UEFA Cup, which was a fantastic introduction into into big time football. Since then, came you know obviously a little bit after that, so I was beginning to make a little bit of a reputation for myself. But things like that moment to be in Saint Etienne don't do you any harm in kind of sort of in, you know um, in your acceptance by the by the fans and you know scoring a goal like that in, in an important situation oh, perhaps <laughs> then, <laughs> scoring a goal in, in an important situation like that you know develops this kind of belief uh, yeah. from on the from the Fans point of view that they that they all of a sudden thought that perhaps um, you know you could do it every time and uh, and certainly on the big occasions I don't think it brought any real pressure on me but the fact that they believed that I could do it yeah I think um, was a big part of the you know my my little you know my success really. yeah it's it's funny because you you talk in the book about if you you know if, you, if you're being labelled this sub two shots of course if you're um, You've been labelled as something. There's that. There's maybe that pressure that comes with it. You you made an effort to make sure that you <laughs> you made sure that you made an effort to do something when you come on the pitch. You know, I think you say something on the lines of you come on and be tidy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, and you maintain possession and, and knocking here and there. But people are going to think you've not had an impact unless you're getting on the pitch and getting shots off and testing the keeper and stuff. Definitely, I think. Um, Generally, I came on in situations where it needed a little bit of uh, of something, and um, I'd always been used to scoring lots of goals as a as a schoolboy in in the different forms of football that I played in. So um, 
you know, to come on in uh, in those situations, it, w it was crucial to actually, you know, make an impact to, to make sort of Bob Paisley sort of maybe sit up and notice and think that I had more, you know, more to offer and I should be given maybe uh, more of an extended run. So I was doing it for my own benefit as much as anything else, obviously enjoyed doing it, um, the fact that it was helping them. What's it, what was it like then, I suppose, the, the mentality? Is it something about football that hasn't changed? That you talk a lot about, like, I guess, the, the disappointment and the natural disappointment you'll face when Liverpool are doing well, they're succeeding, but if you're not, if you're not actively involved on the pitch, you don't feel the same level of connection because you've not you've not had that active input on the match. What, what was it? You know, how do you keep yourself up, keep yourself up for stuff like that? Because you know, at the drop of a hat, anyone can go off with an injury, and you're right back. You're right in the thick of things. Yeah, that, that, that's right. I think the, the, the times it was it was difficult to to lift you. Uh, your spirits because Bob Paisley wasn't really ever great at that I don't I, I don't think I mean I'm not wishing to to be unfair but he never kind of really involved me in the in the team talks and stuff like that he talked about the 11 and while yeah. you were sitting there on the bench he had no intentions basically of using you even though Roy Evans wants sort of the, a theory that perhaps you ever think that the boss picked you as the first name on the team sheet well, I always found that hard to accept. It's a, it's, an, yeah. it's, a, it's a funny way of thinking about it, yeah. but he was, he was trying to make me feel better. But um, the sub does feel very low, and, it, and it's, it, it makes the game maybe a, a very selfish sort of... Uh, it makes it sound so selfish, yeah. because while you're sitting there watching the, them play, you're thinking to yourself, well, I hope somebody you know gets injured every gets minute. Injured. <laughs> this is going to be your this is your, going to be your moment, and uh, and I was always I was always the, the the same. I'd be sitting there, and then and you know I've heard theories down the years that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer sat there working out how the opposition were playing, and uh, he knew when he came on what he was going to have to do, and all that type of stuff. Well, I didn't because I just came on and and just tried to be me. Yeah, you know I, I wasn't. I wasn't concentrated enough to, to sit there and notice that the weakness was the right back or the left back or what have you, uh, because I never knew uh, what you know what position I was going to go on to, to, to play. Sometimes my, my instruction was to uh, just get on there, just make yourself busy and just see if you can get a, a piece of something yeah. or go down the left and have a go at him or go down the right. Uh, so. You know, I never really studied the game a great deal. I used to sit there, and I, I was very disappointed, to be honest with you. It wasn't a case of being just happy to be number twelve. Yeah, you, you obviously make mention it again, <laughs> in, uh, about the, the man management of uh, Bob Paisley. When you do, you think it's you look at like the type of manager maybe Brendan Rodgers is. Do you think that's? Would you have preferred to work under the, a kind of manager who, who speaks more in glowing terms, and maybe puts more of an arm round the shoulder? I guess, or I mean, I suppose you can't argue with the, the results that the, the managers of Liverpool, Liverpool at that era, I guess. Yeah, exactly. You can't you can't uh, ever under undermine the achievements and and what was going on. And in Bob Paisley's eyes, as, as long as they were winning, then then that was fine. And, and his his main concern, as I say, most of the time was. The, the eleven who were you know who who we first sort of uh, started with yeah. my, my sort of I was incidental to, to it really I, I looked at a thing um, uh, an article a little while ago uh, and, and Jose Mourinho said how he he tries to make you know numbers sort of 12 13 14 15 happy he didn't yeah. want to be around miserable people but <laughs> you know and i think that's a good that, that's a less good of an issue with one sub in the day i guess in those days yeah, you just had to want to look at one miserable person <laughs> uh, but it didn't seem to bother him too much uh, he never ever he, he very if ever he, he came up and, and just sort of said you know um try to really lift my spirits it was, it was down to me, the people around me, my mum, my dad, and, uh, and you know, and my good mates really to 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 keep me on track. Oh, the plum! This is this is one of the long. This is like this is basically gone like snooker long. length uh, so far. Yeah, it's a bit. Uh, it's not going to bring. Oh. It's not going to bring the fans back, is it? To uh, <laughs> televised Sin pool. Scintillating pool action. You spent some time toward the end of its existence in the NASL as well over in the city. You went on, yeah. loan, on loan to Toronto, Toronto Blizzard. I went on summer to to Toronto Blizzard. Yeah, which was uh, which was interesting. And you know, at, at that point, I'd never I'd never been to America. Yeah. So to, to 
to go and play football through the summer, get the opportunity to see America and experience life was um, was, was brilliant. Even though Toronto was in Canada, I know. <laughs> <laughs> we did play in the North American Soccer League, and uh, you know the, the, the trips around America were, were fantastic. It was it was a great it was it was a great summer in in that sense. But you know, again, it brought its own um, it brought its own little um, sort of problems in, in terms of football because although I've gone away on, in summer and some people think well it's just an extended summer holiday um, it was part of my career now I was going there for a purpose and the purpose was to try and get fit to come back to re restart my Liverpool career yeah. so I had to take it seriously and, um, and, and, and I get sort of caught in a situation over there in, in, in Toronto where um, it, it didn't perhaps I didn't go and capture their imagination straight away I think that's something that, that Stevie will find, you know, he'll go over to America and I know he's a superstar, um, more or less everywhere else bar North America. Yeah. There is that expectancy, you know, you come, they, they're being told this guy's played for, you know, Liverpool or one thing or another and uh, they've been this and they've been that. They, they have this huge expectancy and, um, and that brings a little bit of pressure, obviously on me in a slightly different to, to Stevie, you know what I mean? But um, it, it does sort of, you know, create that little bit of uh, tension, and you want things to go well, and, and, and didn't really go as well as I would have liked initially, but it did pick up. I should keep talking. <sighs> you what can you say? You were distracting as best you could. <laughs> as best I possibly could. That slope on the table. Well, I, I think, think that's, yeah. <laughs> it's not, we've not levelled it off. <laughs> Probably not levelled it off, can I think? Wasn't a level playing field, that's for sure. <laughs> Okay, well, Dave, thanks very much for You're coming in. It's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, of course, you can check the book out, which we will grab. Once again. Uh, Super we're going to be available in all good bookstores. Uh, you're going to be doing a bit of a, a promotional tour and stuff around yeah, it as well, aren't you? Some so? bad spook stops as well. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so, do go and check out the book. Thank you very much for watching, and uh, thank you very much for coming in. Our esteemed guest as well. Uh, check out the rest of the content on the redmentv.com. Some amazing stuff this week. Thank you very much for watching. Ta -ra. Two in front of the back four, or would you like to see them? No, if, they get, if they get the license to, to move forward, then that will be uh, an asset going forward. But there's some games that you've got to sort of, you know, we, we've said already, have a pragmatic approach. And, and yesterday was certainly one. I mean, Whelan and Adam are, are two sort of like difficult opponents in the midfield, they're competitive, you know, combative. 